Um, good, good afternoon, everybody. Hopefully everybody can hear me and see my screen. Uh, my name is Brian Hoare from Zetali, and I would like to offer a big warm welcome to this session this afternoon on IBM MLC 4% annual increase. This is the second of these types of sessions I've done. Um, and as most of you know, by now you will have started to incur that cost from IBM. I actually look at it as more of a tax. So while we're here this afternoon, just think about me as your IBM tax consultant. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about who we are or who are we, why we're presenting this, a painful bit if you don't do anything about the 4% annual increase that you get every year. Some examples of this, what it means to you, and maybe how much has been spent that possibly didn't have to be spent. Ways to resolve this, well, well, resolve it, maybe that's a strong word, may, ways to offset the 4% increase. And we'll go through a few ideas on those. One of them is dynamically modifying the defined capacity of each LPA. Um, instead of having a set DC, it changes every time the workload increases or decreases. And then we're going to have a summary and a Q&A at the very end. About a third of the way through this session today, we will actually be having a demonstration as well, showing you what we do. All right, Zitali, formerly known as Z Cost Management. Um, French company based in North, but we have offices now in Texas and in Florida here in the US. Been around since 2006, and we've been releasing new products, especially in the last couple of years. There's been two or three products, and we've got another one due to come out this, uh, this year as well. Some of our users, and these are some of the clients that have taken advantage of our services and our software to reduce their IBM MLC. So let's get on. Why are we presenting this? Why are we doing this? I've kind of given that game away. But on January the 1st of each year, your IBM MLC increases by 4%. If you're an IBM mainframe user using MLC products, you don't get a choice. You have to pay the 4%. You're legally obliged. So what does that actually mean to you? At the end of uh, or the beginning of February, you run your SCRT, you send it off to IBM, and about six to eight weeks later, you get an invoice. It's probably about now for your February usage, and you'll have noticed, yes, it's gone up by 4%. Now, this is not an IBM bash, because we all love IBM. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be in business. However, uh, IBM have done a really good job with new hardware. If you think about it, um, go back 12, 13 years, maybe about the time the Z10 came out. IBM um, new hardware and it was really efficient. Z10, 11, 12. Um, and that was to address some of the biggest issues the end users had out there, which were upgrade fees, not just on IBM products, the OTC products, the IPLA products, but also the ISV products. And if you think about it, whenever you now do buy a new mainframe, you upgrade, maybe you go from a Z12 to a Z14, or a, a lot of companies just skip a generation, or a 13 to a, the latest one, a Z15. Um, in the additional capacity MSUs you acquire, it's usually relatively small. It's nothing like it used to be, where you know we when you go back to the 3090 series, there'd be a 30 or a 40 percent increase of uh, MSUs. This four percent, I call it, as I said, is an annual tax increase. During this session, the objective of this is to discuss ways to reduce that IBM MLC 4% and consider additional ways to reduce it by another 6 to 8%. So we're looking at anywhere between 8, 10, 12, even 15%. And some of those users that I listed, they've got up to 15% by following some of our methodologies and using our services and software. 
All right, let me let, let's do a little bit of history, shall we? What happened in 2014? Uh, Ebola. World shows in Sochi and Rio. Um, anybody know what those shows were? Do you want to put it into the chat? Um, they were two very, very well known shows. And I'll give you a hint. The one in Rio was not, don't call it soccer, call it its real name. A spacecraft lands on a comet between Jupiter and Mars. We could go to Cuba. Cuba opened its doors. And the big one, the earth shattering announcement that IBM said the 4% would be starting. All right, so let's look at how much this has cost you since 2014. And I'm going to give you a very simple uh, example. And sorry about that. Give you a simple example. And what would have happened if you'd have been able to offset any CPU capacity increase and that 4%? Uh, annual IBM MLC increase. All right, my example is going to have nine IBM MLC products. There's about 30, 35 of them out there. And as you can see up on the screen, these are the ones that I've chosen. Um, uh, I've used these as candidates for this exercise. Now, before anybody shouts at me and says, hey, we don't have nine, we have six, or we have 12, or we have 15. Uh, we don't have all of those. That's not the point. This is a process that we can take you through so you can start to understand what the savings would have been if you could offset that 4% MLC and 2% capacity increase. In 2014, my example, we had 504 MSUs, um, and in 2021, we had 580. That's about a 2% increase per annum. The cost per annum was almost 4 million in 2014, but there are lots of variables that we must consider. And as you can see there, we've still got this 4% increase. However, there are uh, some variables here, and this is what I want to walk you through now. Think about the variables of your IBM MLC products. Uh, for each MLC product you have, the product usage may not equal the capacity of the machine. Typically, it won't. Uh, ZOS will, uh, in most cases, not in all cases, because it may be capped. But um, ZOS is probably the only product that actually does. Um, your MLC products may change over that period of 24 to 2017. Um, you could even be running, and you often are running multiple products of the same. For example, you when you upgrade from say DB2 from uh, 11 to 12, you don't just turn one on and turn the other one off. Usually there's an overlap of what, 12 months, sometimes longer. 2% annual MSU growth, I think that's conservative. Also, IBM have done a really good job in bringing out different IBM license methodologies, the one that you pay for it. Back in 2014, PLSC was around, VUE, and then since, what, 2015, 2016, uh, CMP's come out, TFP, and AWRC's been out for a long time. So you may have changed. So that's going to make a difference to your payments. The number of IBM MLC products may increase or decrease. Lots more variables here. Um, what was each of these IBM MLC products contribution to the peak? Did that product need to run in the peak? Coming back to my original 504 MSU uh, example, uh, mainframe, each product will have a different contribution. Why is that? And it's typical because, and then let's take the ZOS for example, the products, the MLC products, run on tiers and they cost different amounts. For example, ZOS, the first one through three MSUs are very expensive, tier one. Then uh, MSUs you use uh, four through 44, tier two are less expensive. 
then the next tier 45 through, I think it's 145, something like that. Please don't correct me if I'm slightly out. Um, that's a different price and so on and so on. Now, CICS, DB2, uh, INS, NetView, RACF, they work on the same basis of tiers, but they, the tiers are slightly bigger or smaller and they, or they may be bigger or smaller and they charge differently. So, you know, it's not an easy thing to work out what a product's price contribution is to the four hour rolling average. Now, as I said, it has a different cost and a different tier. Now, what I want to do is without confusing you too much, and as I say, are you confused yet? 2014, my annual NLC was almost 4 million with the uh, increases. Anybody who'd like to hazard a guess at what the MLC would be in 2021 with the 4% and the 2% growth? If you'd like to put it into the chat window in your email address, I'll send you a Starbucks card. And even if you're within a hundred thousand dollars. All right, six million. So over a seven year period, we've started to have to pay for the site for a little bit more capacity. Um, we've increased by what almost 50%. And here's the hard numbers. This is how we did all the calculations for this. We looked at those products. We in, did an internal calculation. Um, and as you can see here, you've got the years, you've got what the MLC cost would be on a monthly basis, the annual MLC, and the number of MSUs. So let me peel back the onion because that difference between 2014 and 2021 of 2 million is not the real number. In 2014, we we're paying nearly 4 million. It went up by uh 248k in 2015 that includes the increases 2016 it went up 263k from 2015 but if you could have offset the two percent increase and the four percent increase and stayed at the same levels that you were in 2014 the savings for that period would have been 248 plus 512, which equals just over three quarters of a million for two years. And hopefully you can see where we're now going with this. Build the onion back even further. Let's have a look using that same process at 2017. Numbers, another 280K in 2017. So again, if you could deflect any capacity increase and that 4% increase, the savings would be 248 plus 512 plus 792. We're starting to get to a lot of money or well over one and a half million dollars. A lot of money. And there's all those variables too. So let's continue this process to 2021. Remembering that MLC started, the 4% increase started in 2014. So if the 2% Everything could have been deflected for that seven year period. The number would have been almost eight million dollars. Now, let's re let's get a little bit realistic. With all of these variables, what I've suggested is okay, could we even save 50% of that? And if we could, we're up around about four million dollars. And we believe we can. We, could, we can't save you the money that you've already spent, but going forward, we certainly can. How do we calculate this? IBM MLC costs for each year and each and the MLC products that you've got for that year. Um, you know, go and look, you've got the information. Look at 2014, 15, right through to 2021. What are your capacity increases been for each year for that same period? If you send that information to me, we'll do an analysis for you, all right? And we can calculate that relatively easy, all right? And one of the things we'll be doing after this is we'll be following up with you 
to ensure to see if you'd be interested in that particular analysis. But as you can see, these numbers are scary. What's even worse, what if you don't change? What if you don't do anything? What's going to happen in the next seven years? Just remember, I have not included any of the ISV upgrade fees because, again, you probably pay maybe our power pricing, part pricing, maybe for the full capacity of the machine. But I haven't even included that. So there's additional savings to be had here. As Steve Turner, a poet, uh, said, history repeats itself. It has to, because nobody ever listens. I quite like that. So where do we go from here? Remember that oh, almost 8 million? I cringe every time I see that number. 22 to 29. If we don't, the problem is just going to get worse and worse and worse. The numbers are going to get huge. Think about it. Thoughts. All right, so here's some suggestions. Here's what we believe the answer is. Identify who is driving up your four hour rolling average. Who are the peak contributors? Uh, what workload? And I have a little chuckle because I talk to some companies and they say, we know every workload that contributes to the four hour rolling average. I run an analysis and guess what? I always find something that should not be adding to the peak. Dynamically modify the defined capacity of an LPA. So a workload that needs MSUs can get them when it needs them and release MSU when it doesn't need them. Manage the MSUs to what you want to pay and continually manage the contribution to the four hour rolling average while meeting SLAs. What we suggest companies do, and we, we help them, we've done this many, many times, is we look at their workload, we look at uh, their SCRTs and how much they're paying, and we say, right, right off the block, we can always reduce you by about 5%, and you will still meet your SLAs. We've done it time. Workload will always meet your SLAs, performance will not suffer, but you will get your IBM MLC reduced. And hopefully we can get to some of those higher numbers. And as I always say, remember the IBM tax. So let's have a quick look at this. Um, step one, you know, the cost contributors to the rolling four hour average. A lot of companies uh, say, yeah, we know we can display this in MSUs, but we can't display it in dollar costs. Well, we can, and we can show you how to do that. So we display how much each workload costs, MSUs, what the priority is, in dollars and cents. And this is really key, because if you're doing it in dollars and cents, it means a lot more to a lot more people. And again, you can see, oh, there's a job that begins with T. That's a testing job. Why is that add, add, adding 11,000 to my peak? Now, if you can start using this and you can start working with the businesses um, and all of a sudden companies will say, well, that workload has to run at that time, or maybe it doesn't, maybe it can run at a slightly different time, all aimed at reducing your contribution to the peak four hour rolling average. Dynamically modifying the defined capacity of each alpha that you have. Um, Hopefully everybody on this call understands how the rolling four hour average or four hour rolling average works. Somebody said, you've got to say it one way or another, but IBM used both the acronym in both ways. So, so am I. We have a good idea on how the billing works. If uh, CICS um, uses a uh, hundred MSUs and it's sharing an LPAR with DB2, it uses 50 MSUs, guess what? You'll be charged for 100 net, 150 MSUs for both uh, MLC products. The combination. What does the SCRT do for you? I don't think it does very much. It tells you how many MSUs you use that month for each MLC product. It doesn't tell you anything. One of the ways that you can help reduce cost is to set the MSUs you want to pay for. As I said, when we do this work analysis with you, we always say, right, let's start with reducing your bill by at least 
5% to start with. Do the analysis, um, run simulations, and it works. It will reduce your, your, your costs. And of course, meet your SLAs. LPARs are de increase, decrease on the LPAR priority and the workload. And here's a general principle. Here's a very simple way of displaying this. I've got three LPARs. You can see LPAR 1, 150, LPAR 2, 135, LPAR 3, 170. Two minute RMF interval, LPAR 1 suddenly needs more MSUs. So it's got a higher priority workload than say LPAR 2. That gets shrunk and LPAR 3 at the same time needs more uh, MSUs. Now I've used some big numbers there, but typically we, most companies say let, let another LPAR take the MSUs, you know, usually two or three MSUs at a time. Dynamically modifying the defined capacity optimizes the performance of your system while controlling your WLC charge. There are a number of parameters, which I'm not going to go through at this stage, that give you the control to do that. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to pass over to Roberto Pacheco, uh, one of our very, very best technical consultants, and he is actually going to demonstrate these solutions to you. All right, let me see if I can. Okay, thank you, Brian. All right. Let me share my screen right now. Okay. Good. Yep, we can see your screen, Roberto. Take it away. Okay, just a second. Perfect. Good. Thank you, Brian. Um, uh, hello, everyone. I'm Roberto Pacheco. I've been working at Zetali since 2018, and I'm helping the sales team at Zetali prom uh, to promote our solutions on the market. The idea here is to do a quick demo uh, in, with the Zetali solution, where uh, uh, I will talk about two components of the Zetali solution. This is the main screen. I don't know if everybody can see it. I suppose that yes. Uh, and here is the main screen of the Zetali solution. Uh, the Zetali solution has four components. Uh, we are going to talk about a little bit uh, about cost control. And after that, we'll talk about automated capacity, that's the solution that dynamically modifies the defined capacity, okay? So, if we click here on the cost control, uh, following what uh, Brian explained us uh, regarding uh, control, uh, see who is contributing to the rolling four hours average. First of all, you need to understand the consumption of your environment, correct? So for these uh, uh, cost control, you are able to register your contracts, load your SRT, SCRTs, and then you have different dashboards to analyze the information. Uh, are you not entering the, the configuration and parameters that uh, you need to, to input on the, the solution? I will uh, keep uh, showing the dashboards with the information from SCRT first and then how you can see the contributors uh, for the ro for, for rolling four hours average, okay? So this dashboard here brings us uh, uh, the information from the SCRT, and uh, you can see here the consumption of your softwares, okay? If you have mobile reduction or, or not. Uh, also, you have some statistics related to the peak, so minimum, median, average, and the, 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 the peak that you have on, on a specific month. Here you choose which month you want to analyze, okay? Also, if you want to see a particular CPC, a particular product, uh, or uh, different license modes, you are able to do that using those filters here on the top. But the idea here is to understand who is uh, 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 
how is your consumption related to um, MSUs and for each product? Okay. So if we pick up ZOS, that's the the uh, most important product on this SCRT. Uh, you see here it because it's consuming uh, ten thousand two hundred thirty one, and here you have the details product by product and which day the peak happened and which time as well here on the right hand side. Another thing that's important here to show if uh, to understand if is if it, it, the peak is happening during the day or during the night, and here you are you can easily identify that. Okay. Also, if you want to understand the contributors, which LPAR is contributing to the peak, you just click here and you can see uh, the LPAR is contributing to the peak. Okay. Uh, here we have the peak on the ZOS 10,231 uh, and the LPAR is contributing to that peak. If we come back to the to, to to this dashboard on the bottom, we have here the representation of each software as well and the top contributors. So we see here that we have an LPAR P9 contributing, uh, uh, that's the, the LPAR consuming more uh, resources on these, uh, this analysis. If we click on this LPAR, we can see the contribution on each product here uh, uh, for this LPAR. And we see here for different products, uh, this LPAR is consuming all, almost all the peak. You see, and there are other products that that uh, that are not running on, on on that LPAR. Okay, so this uh, dashboard is just to understand and to 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 see the peaks you have on your environment. And once you know the peak, the date, and the time. You are able to go further and uh, see the contributors, the jobs running on the specific picks, and try to uh, see opportunities to reduce your costs. If I could go back to the cost control uh, main menu, I have here another dashboard that's the top 20 jobs. Here uh, we have uh, we have the, the jobs running on the rolling four hours. So in the four, four hours of the peak, we have the jobs that were running there, like Brian uh, showed in, the, in, the, in, in his uh, presentation. We have here, but the, 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 we had the same uh, picture here, but now it's the dashboard, the dynamic dashboard working. So you have the representation here of the jobs running on each hour and on the table, uh, right on side, we have here technical information related to WLM, the priority of those jobs running on, on that hour, uh, the MSU consumption, the total cost based on the MSU price, okay, and the contribution of each, each job running on the rolling four hours uh, average, okay, so the amount of hours that the job was running there. And here you are able to identify the top jobs running and here is the first way to see opportunities to, uh, to reduce your, your costs because uh, you, of course it's uh, case by case, uh, shop by shop, uh, but you can identify that jobs that are running on the peak could be running in another, in another day or another time. So you can spread more the execution of your of your jobs in order to reduce the peaks okay so with Z uh, zetali cost control it brings you some uh, some uh, information some information that you can use uh, to find some opportunities to reduce your uh, your peaks okay if we go now to Zetali automated capacity, that's another component of Zetali. You are able to see another, the step two of uh, the Brian's analysis. That's the, uh, how to dynamically uh, modify the defined capacity. 
Okay, so let's go there. And here is the interface of uh, ZAC, what we call ZAC, that's the component of ZTALI, uh, ZTALI automated capacity. Here we have the representation of the CPCs. Each CPC is represented here and here. And also we have here representation of a CMP. CMP, country multiplex pricing. Uh, I, I suppose that everybody knows about that. That's a kind of extension of AWC, okay? Uh, where you can group all your CPCs running in, in the same country and uh, as it was a virtual, a big one uh, CPC. Uh, here it brings us uh, uh, different KPIs. Uh, the red one here is the IMSU uh, that you can um, uh, think about your workload. So the, that's the instant MSU that you can see uh, on the RMF or all the monitors on the market. Uh, we have here in the green bar, that's the rolling four hours average. The blue bar is the defined capacity. That's the uh, parameter you use it to implement soft, uh, the, uh, the soft capping uh, uh, feature inside the CPC. And the gray bar here is the capacity. We have this information, this, the same KPIs for the CMP configuration and also uh, specifically for each uh, CPC. Uh, first of all, this solution calculates for you in near real time the billing peak. So you don't need to run uh, SCRTs during the month to understand how is your peak. Uh, you have here, this solution calculates for you in near real time because this solution works in intervals and each two in two minutes, it uh, collects all the, all the KPIs from all LPARs and uh, calculates the billing peak. If you click in this, in this highlighted uh, word here, billing peak, you can see the contribution of each LPAR on the billing. Okay. And you have uh, different views here, one hour, four hours, eight hours, tw less 12 hours or 36 hours. That's the maximum points you have on this chart. Okay. And you can zoom in, zoom out uh, to see uh, the information from uh, the, the MSU consumption from each uh, LPAR. And when you hover the mouse here, you can see also the MSU consumption for each uh, LPAR and the date and time, okay, each hour. Okay, if you want to see also for a particular CPC, uh, this we are we, we are looking the 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 billing peak of uh, the billing of this CPC one. But if you want to see the same KPIs we saw in the first screen, you just click in the CPC zero one, and then you have here the the curves. You have the IMSU, that's the your workload, uh, the rolling four hours average, that's the green curve, and the blue curve, that's the defined capacity. So you see here the defined capacity changing all the time. Uh, most of the time following the rolling four hours and sometimes under the rolling four hours. And then I will explain this later, how it works uh, and where, where, uh, how you can save money using uh, the defined capacity. Okay. If we move, if uh, we have here different tabs, groups and LPARs, PSLC, parameters. Uh, if we go to LPAR, we can see a particular LPAR and see uh, how it works, the, the workload, the behavior uh, this workload have on, on, the, on, on the, the chart here. And if we click in this LPAR, 105, we can see uh, the behavior of this workload, of this LPAR. As you can see here, we have a yellow bar here uh, that represents the soft capping in place. If we zoom in here, we can see the peaks and troughs we, we have here on the IMSU, so the, your workload, uh, the workload on this LPAR going up and going down, and you see the rolling four hours and the defined capacity. 
here you see the defined capacity is changing at inter each interval of two minutes. Okay, and when the IMSU is low, what happens? The DC goes under of the rolling four hours average. Sorry, this is a this is a near real time uh, chart. I have to stop the refresh. It's refreshed even each two minutes. So let's do it again. So zoom in. Uh, I forgot I forgot to to stop the refresh, and let's see it again. Here. So we see that when the workload is low, uh, the DC goes and follows the IMSU, and here is where you are saving money uh, on your bill. Why? Because the CRT calculates uh, the peak of the LPAR based on these two fields, these two KPIs, rolling four hours and DC. The lowest value of those uh, of these two fields will be considered with the as the billing uh, peak on that hour. Of course, it's an average uh, of those uh, informations during the hour. And if you use the soft capping feature, bringing the DC under the rolling four hours when you have low workload on your LPAR, you are saving money uh, on your uh, environment, okay? And here is the point that Brian mentioned uh, to dynamic, dynamically modify the DCs uh, to save uh, around between two and eight, depending on the shop, we can uh, reach 15% of savings just implementing the soft capping feature in a dynamic way, changing the DC dynamically. Okay. Dep of course, depending on the shop, uh, we can uh, reach those uh, percentages. Uh, and there are others that we can uh, reach eight, nine, 10. Uh, but always we see some, uh, some savings, some opportunities to reduce the costs uh on the shop on the shops also on this interface uh we want the the, the soft cap feature here that we implement and the kpis we have here related to rolling for hours dc and imsu we have also other technical information that's useful for the technicians okay looking at the lpar 105 if we uh, look, if we go uh, and see more details about the, the workload and we click here in this highlight IMSU, we can see the double M information for this LPAR. And we can see that for all LPARs, okay? It works for all LPARs. I'm, I'm taking the example of this LPAR 105, but we can see uh, the workload information from, from any, any other. And here you have the MSU consumption by importance. When you hover the mouse here, you can see the uh, the consumption by importance. Okay, and if you want to understand which service class is contributing more for each importance, you just click in the importance, and then you have the service classes running on that importance and. Uh, you have the the MSU consumption on the same way. Okay. This solution has uh, many other uh, uh, features. Uh, okay, it works with containers, with TFP. Uh, uh, you can define groups. All the policies are dynamic. I, are dynamic, you can set up different policies during the day, during the night. And uh, this component works respecting the parameters you specify and uh, the limits, of course, you specify to not consume more resources uh, than uh, you specify on the, on the solution, okay? And also here, the last thing that I would like to show, you can follow up the decisions taken by, by the solution as well. So if we click in the decision log, you can understand uh, the changes, the DC changes during the period. So uh, 
the date, the time, and the LPAR, and how was defined your DC and the value now. So, and this arrow here show us if it's removing uh, DCs from one LPAR, or let's go down. Yes. Yeah, here we have an unknown. Let me see another example here. Okay, here we have an example where uh, the DC was 45 and was increased to 48. Why? Because we have an increase on the workload on the IMSU where the solution identify, uh, identified that it needs to increase the DC in order to not cause any restriction on the environment. Okay. So, and uh, all of that, it's, uh, you can control and see all the charts in, the, in a web interface, but it's running uh, inside your ZOS in a patch server uh, running one of uh, your LPAR, okay? I think that's it, what uh, uh, I prepared to show today during this webinar. And now I will return to Brian to, to uh, finish with the uh, summary considerations and uh, and after that we can discuss in the Q&A if you have any other questions related to what I, what I have presented here okay during the this quick demo thank you roberto would you just put up that last slide the summary slide for me please okay it's there yeah i can see it look at that teamwork all right so in summary what do we sh what do we talked about this afternoon or this morning if you're on the west coast or international um ways that can help reduce this four hour rolling average four percent ibm mlc tax and the two percent capacity increase identify the peak contributors to the four hour rolling average find out in dollars and cents go talk to the end users the business unit if a workload uh, runs in the peak for two hours. Maybe they don't need to run for two hours. Maybe it could run for an hour and a half. Um, once we understand what is contributing to the peak and growing it, then we can do something about it. Sometimes the end user, the business unit will say, no, it can't run at a different time. But we need to understand. Um, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, as the old saying goes. Um, Dynamically modify the defined capacity so a workload that needs MSUs can get them when they need them. Um, by doing that, that workload may finish just that little bit quicker. Um, other less priority or lower priority workloads, yeah, that may slow down a little bit. But if it doesn't need to run in the peak, then hey, does it really matter? Because if you're on an IBM licensing model like CMP or AWLC, and even TFP, and that is another discussion, there are ways that you still need to manage this with TFP, although IBM will tell you different. Um, you, you still need to manage what MSUs you're using. Manage the MSUs to what you pay for. And as I said earlier, typically when we do a simulation on this, we say, right, let's reduce your MSUs by 5%. Let's reduce your bill. You know, it could be 4%, it could be 8%, it could be higher. But let's start working on that. And as you've seen by the, you know, with that example I gave with 580 MSUs, you know, there's what, 8 million, almost $8 million that we potentially could have deferred over the last seven years. Um, a topic I haven't really brought up, I, I touched on it. But again, review your IBM licenses. IBM have done a great job in bringing out new licenses and they're doing it all the time. In fact, there's a new uh, flavor hybrid, maybe that's too strong a word of TFP, that I, uh, TFP for hardware that I saw come out um, just got six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. Um, I'm just trying to get my head around it, but uh, happy to talk to you about any of these. But again, look at your IBM licenses because they can really help save you money. You know, whether it's TFP, whether it's AWLC, even VUE, and there's, I saw a VUE license recently that was dependent 
on the four hour rolling average. And I've never seen that before. So IBM are doing a good job. They're being creative. Look at your IBM LC costs and the list of your MLC products you do each year. It's just good housekeeping. Do you need them? Do you use them? Could you swap them out for something different that doesn't cost as much? And as the last bullet there says, there is more than one way to dig for money and avoid the tax. All right. Um, that just about brings us to the end is what I'd like to do is see if there are any questions that have come through. I know there's been a couple. Um, and I'm going to bring in another of our colleagues here, Carla. Carla, can you hear me? I can. Um, I do have a few questions that were sent in. Super. All right. The first one. Can you show again how each job relates to the amount of time it runs? For example, if a job is only running for 20 minutes rather than an hour or seven minutes. Roberto, I think that's you. Yeah, if I, if I understood well, yes, we can show and we can show the contribution of uh, all jobs running in on each hour, of course. And uh, the idea is to to compare the, the consumption of each job on the four rolling hours. OK, uh, to see if it's. Uh, uh, contributing to the peak or not. Sometimes we have uh, uh, jobs running um, only a few minutes that does, doesn't interfere on the on the rolling four hours uh, uh, peak. So uh, we, we we can show that the top jobs. Uh, so it's not considered to, to the peak. But the idea here is to show who is contributing, and that's why that's the the idea of that dashboard we show uh, related to the the jobs that are contributing with the, the ro rolling four hours peak. Okay. All right. Hopefully that'll answer the question, and obviously we'll be doing some follow up with that person. Yes. Uh, All there right. Others? There are. Uh, how does a POC work? Do you run in simulation mode? Yes, um, we work. Uh, um, we 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 have a process to to for a POC. The first of all, we run a simulation using the SMF data from the the prospect. So we collect the SMF seventy and eight nine uh, for one billing cycle that means from the second day of the month to the first day of the next month uh, we collect the, these these two uh, two smfs 70 and 89 and also the scrt report generated during this billing cycle and then we bring these to our to our environment and we run a simulator using those smf records and these simulators will show us the potential savings that the prospect would have using uh, the, the solution. Okay. After that, we present the results to the prospect, and and if the uh, prospect accepts, we can install the solution uh, on their environment and run a POC. Okay. Where first of all we install. The solution in message mode, where we'll be just uh, simulating messages, simulating changes, but we'll not change anything. And after that, after one or two weeks running in message mode, we can set up uh, a meeting to discuss the switch to active mode, and then the solution will be working uh, uh, in in a real life. Okay. Uh, and if that doesn't, if hopefully if they have, if they have more questions, then we can uh, expand upon it one on one. And the last question for right now is how much does this solution cost? I think this is for Brian. <laughs> <laughs> That's called being thrown under the bus. <laughs> um, okay, we we typically license this solution. Uh, based on MSUs, and we can license it as a perpetual license or as a term license. So depending on the size of your environment, 
we will license it there. Typically, and typically each for every time we we find out that the ROI is less than 12 months. I've seen as small as four months, but usually it's seven, eight months, maybe nine. So we need to sit down with you and say, okay, well, look, this is how many MSUs you've got. These are the types of savings we're going to give you. Then we prove it. Well, that's most important. Then we write the business case with the uh, ROI in there at the same time. Hopefully that will answer that question and any of the other technical questions. Okay. Well, that was all I had at the moment. So. All right. Well, thank you, Carla. And what I'd like to do now is to wrap this up. Hopefully um, I haven't scared or confused you too much with the $8 million or the massive amount of money that potentially could have been deferred. And we've given you a few ideas on how you can stop this from occurring over the next seven years. Um, somebody's just whispered in my ear and said, hey, we're not going to be on the, we're not going to be around for that long. Hey, it doesn't matter. Your environment will. All right. Um, I would like to thank you on behalf of Roberto, Carla, myself, and Z Tally. Thank you very much for taking time out of what is a very busy afternoon. And last but not least, please stay safe. And thank you again for attending. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.